Uh, so the pot stocks uh, went nuts. So the NASDAQ names went up. I mean, when was the last time you saw the NASDAQ composite go up 9%? Just absolutely insane. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing okay. So the people have spoken. Uh, we officially, well not officially, but unofficially officially, um, we officially, unofficially have a new uh, president-elect, okay? Um, I believe Biden, last time I checked, had like 290 electoral votes, uh, making him the 46th uh, president-elect of the United States of America. Um, now, before we go started, I, I, I understand how much of a charged issue this is, okay? Um, I'm a personal, I'm a registered Republican. I vote Republican down the line pretty much on everything. Uh, my bottom line is always, my bottom line is always taxes. Um, so for me, I've never really been a big fan of politics. I personally think politicians are just not the, the way I want to spend my uh, time. But I do understand how passionate uh, so many people are, whether you love Trump, whether you uh, hated Trump. I get it, right? I get it. And it's great to be passionate in, in, in things in life, um, and it's great to stand behind something that you believe in. Uh, unfortunately, the one thing in life we don't have control over is the macro picture, whether it's the stock market, uh, whether it's life in general, or obviously there's 300 million people in the United States um, having the ability to want or need uh, our favorite candidate. So I, I get all that stuff. But now that we are here, and we know exactly who's going to be running the country for the next four years, you can go about it two ways, okay? You can spend the next four years crying and moaning and complaining and bitching about voter fraud and this, that, the other thing, right? That's an option. It's a very, very unproductive option. It's a very, very aggressive and sad way to live your life. Your second option is, okay, Realize what's in front of you. Okay, if you've voted for Biden, you got what you wanted. Uh, you know, I again, I vote Republican, so I didn't get what I wanted, but I kind of didn't lose what I wanted anyway. If you look at why the market rallied, uh, the market really ex embraced the idea of Biden being president. However, the market also embraced that the fact that the Senate was going to be still controlled of to the Republicans. And with that means his very, very aggressive tax hike that he was looking to do is probably not going to be in the cards. And I think the market absorbed that. Um, I think a lot of people that vote Republican uh, absorbed that and kind of you know felt at peace with that. Uh, but at the end of the day, you can spend your four years moaning and complaining or making sure you're adjusting to life no matter what your life is and making your life better for you, yourself and your family. That's it, those are your only two choices. The idea of going on social media for the next four years and still complaining about Biden, or even still complaining about Obama or anybody else is kind of non-productive. And all you're, you're going to do, you're going to agitate yourself. Uh, you're gonna make yourself feel bad. You're, you're going to create uh, underlining medical problems. And unfortunately, you're going to live a very sad existence. So it's incredibly important to move forward. It's like, again, if you have a bad trade and you know you had a bad trade, it's very incredibly important as a professional trader or even aspiring professional trader, have a very short memory and move on. Okay. Same thing with leadership, uh, same thing of a bad marriage, whatever the case may be, you have to move forward with your life. I think the most important part of all of us, whether you're an, uh, a Republican whether you're a Democrat, we are all Americans. At the end of the day, we all play on the same team. Again, you might not like every single person you come across. You might not have the same beliefs as everybody you come across. But again, isn't it our job to teach our children, the next generation, that you don't need to like everybody. Everybody doesn't need to like you, but we could coexist, okay? We could still have 
the same goals in life, happiness, right? The most basic elements of being on earth, being happy, taking care of your family, smiling more, right? Again, being depressed all the time and unhappy all the time, it, it's a very sad existence. So going you know, into uh, the remainder of your weekend or into next week, again, try to put your uh, differences aside with some people, okay? Try to, you know, nobody says you have to love your neighbor, but at least respect your neighbor enough to, you know, enough to, you know, carry on with life, right? And that's the only thing we could ask for. Um, what's done is done. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, and the most important part is, again, what are you going to do next? Um, what I'm going to do next is, well, we're going to order some pizza tonight. Nothing to do with, with, with Biden or Trump, which is Tonight's pizza night. I enjoy pizza. My life's going on. Uh, I've taken care of my chart work. I'm prepared for Monday's session. Life is going on, okay? And slowly but surely, when the hoopla dies uh, and the noise completely dies out and there is a, hopefully a, a smooth transition in the White House, hopefully everybody will benefit from the new administration. I know a lot of you guys are very angry right now and all charged up, uh, and I get it. I get it. But again, you have to look at the big picture. Life is all about uh, having curveballs thrown at you. The key is adapt. Adapt to your life, adapt to your conditions, and it's up to you. Again, if you're sitting around right now and you believe that the government is going to make your life better come, you know, come the new administration, it's just you're wrong. You're wrong and you're going to have a very uh, sad reality. So let's talk about the market. 9% um, move. In the Nasdaq, right? 9%. That's insane. Completely insane. And every single day, just when you think the market can't go up again, it goes up again. And not only can it go up again, the speculation money that has been so obvious in this tape uh, on these EV stocks, on these pot stocks, again, pot stocks of all things, you know, pot stocks have been the, the absolute worst vehicle, trading vehicle maybe even worse than the banks, for God's sake, for the last five years. Every single time one of these pot stocks have a good day, the next day goes lower. It's just been kind of like that for the last uh, three, four years. And finally, they got their kind of check mark. Um, all these, so many states, including my state of New Jersey, uh, legalized recreational use. Uh, Portland, Oregon, okay, will be the major destination. If you're an NBA fan, the Portland Trailblazers will probably have a huge demand of free agency because this is the first state in the union that's completely decriminalizing all illegal drugs. You can do crack, you can do coke, you can do heroin, methamphetamine. The world is your oyster, baby. All jokes aside, but that's exactly what's happening. Uh, so the pot stocks uh, went nuts. So the NASDAQ names went up. I mean, when was the last time you saw the NASDAQ composite go up 9%? Just absolutely insane. The Dow went up about 7%. Uh, and S&P went up about 6.5%, 7% as well. So amazing, amazing rally. And now that we have a little bit of closure of who's going to be our next uh, leader for the next four years, now we have to figure out what's going to happen next with the stock market. And again, I, you know, as I'm doing charts this weekend, all I keep on saying to myself, how can we keep on going buy stocks? Like, how can we buy stocks with, you know, with, with absolute uh, you know, confirmation and absolute... Um, uh, absolute faith that there won't be a rug pull in every single day, no matter what you see in front of you, things are really uh, taken higher. And the, the one thing I started thinking about this weekend, when it comes to earnings, and this is something maybe a lot of you guys have thought about as well. If you guys remember last week, right, uh, we had one of the worst sell-offs uh, since March, since the March lows, and stocks like Amazon and Facebook and Apple and Netflix, they were all getting killed on earnings. And the most ironic part when we started earnings seasons this week, uh, this week um, when you had names like Roku, Square, and Roku and Square had really, really big moves. Uh, Roku had a monster candle into earnings. Square had a monster candle into earnings. And the question I started thinking about, maybe out loud, so maybe, again, maybe some of you guys uh, thought about the same way, are earnings, and again, there's no right or wrong answer to this. This is just something I, I'm kind of just, just thinking out loud. Are earnings now, or maybe they have been, I haven't paid attention, but have earnings really now become a byproduct of how good or how bad the market is? Would Amazon, in other words, if Amazon reported this past week, would the stock go up 300 points instead of going down 300 points the previous week or even 500 points the previous week, right? 
would Square, if Square reported earnings instead of Friday, if they were reported earnings last week, would the stock would have been down 15, 20%? So it's something to kind of pay attention to. I kind of want to uh, get an idea of maybe somebody could back test that. Uh, but I want to, pay, you know, I want to kind of start, you know, thinking about this more and trying to maybe pay attention more uh, up and coming quarters. If the market's really, really good, you know, how, how these stocks are being perceived and obviously uh, the opposite way. So um, right now, again, Monday, but again, you have to, you know, if you're, if you are a common sense trader, you have to t say to yourself, look, we had a 9% move uh, in the market. Can we continue uh, having this much juice? And again, uh, the, 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 the common sense in me says, look, you got, you got to be careful. I don't want to buy the stocks that had a nine day run. I've been saying this every single day, but yet I'm still buying stocks uh, the, the next session. But we definitely have to be careful. I think everybody could, could agree on that. Uh, again, if you look at the names that have big runs, I really don't want to uh, pay attention to them. You know, names like AMD, and again, we touched about the semiconductors. Uh, in the last couple of days, AMD is setting up really well. Uh, on Semiconductor is setting up very, very well. And if you look at the previous names that we had uh, on our watch list of some pivots throughout the week, you could see how strong some of these semiconductor moves were. Xilinx had a huge run. ADI, that we had a you know pretty nice pivot here at 26 and a half, 27, uh, went to 34. Uh, look at Microchip as well. So I think the names like you know stocks that have gone. They're gone, okay? We want to more pay attention, like I said, on the AMD, you know, nice uh, option flow coming in. Because again, it's still attempting to come out of a range uh, on semiconductors. Well, even a name like Intel, right? Uh, that again, had, had two really ugly quarters. Again, can this thing reclaim, you know, 46, 50, 47 and make a move? Very, very possible. Again, it's not something, like Intel wouldn't be a name that I'm watching. But again, you want to kind of almost pay attention to the trailing stocks and not like nvidia is a trailing for anybody but at least you can see how close nvidia is about to come out of a really really long range uh that started on september the second so these are the kind of charts i definitely want to watch uh tesla from last week i'm still watching for that macro break again if you look at the 60 minute view um i liked it thursday into friday it just kind of rested um you know down eight points really not a big deal but i'm still watching this whole macro channel to fall um i still like netflix i was watching netflix and um and Tesla, both of them rested. I still like this whole macro channel to fall. So are there names uh, to play on the long side without having a fear of a big aggressive pull? Absolutely. Again, if you go through just the members of the NASDAQ 100, okay, you don't even need to go through a big, big uh, macro uh, charting uh, session. But if you go through names of the NASDAQ 100, you'll see how many good quality setups there still are. Even Zoom, right? Even Zoom woke up. It just needs one more close, literally one more close over the supply and you got 40, 50 points uh, to the upside. So there's definitely value uh, to the upside going into this week. Um, again, I think we have to stay away from the overextended moves. Um, I think names like a Square uh, and a Roku are, are good value plays, especially with any dip open uh, into rising 60-minute support. So for example, if you look at Square into rising 60-minute support, this is the rising 60-minute support. If you guys notice, every single time, you can just go through any, any area. Bounce, 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 right? Bounce. So we're looking for any open, any open in this rising support. Uh, this 191 area is obviously going to move up. On Monday, obviously, we'll talk about all the bounce areas uh, at Morning Strategy. Uh, also, Roku, again, any value. And again, you can see this with your eyes, guys. That's why I've been kind of reiterating the point, especially on social media. You don't need to buy breakouts or short breakdowns. You could also uh, buy strong names in high probability areas of the rising 60-minute view. And I've been constantly talking about that. So if you look at the, the rising watch here, it bounced, it bounced, it bounced. So I'd like to, somewhere around here, and again, this area will rise uh, come Monday, but this is the value play for a possible move to red to green on both of these names uh, for another run for um for Monday. But the one question, the one question that everybody keeps on asking, well, what's going to happen with Biden as the president? And I've traded through Bill Clinton, Democrat, internet craze, phenomenal market. I've traded through uh, George Bush. George Bush, again, got really the short end of the stick. He was president during 9-11 
uh, the two wars, which obviously one he started, but whatever. I'm a Republican, remember, don't yell at me, <laughs> right? Uh, George Bush with 9-11, horrific. Uh, the two wars, and oh, by the way, the financial crisis, the absolute worst thing. So this guy really had uh, a really tough uh, presidency, which obviously saw uh, a very aggressive move in indexes and uh, it, uh, stock prices going lower. And then came Obama, had a really aggressive rally during his uh, administration as well. And Trump, the, the four years have been really, really good. So again, I wouldn't put too much emphasis on what the market is going to do because there's a Democrat in office. Uh, we've seen now, again, in my lifetime, two Democrats with really great markets. Uh, one a Republican who had really good market, which is Trump and Bush. Again, uh, you could say, obviously, you know, so many different instances happened because of the war and stuff like that in 9-11 that he had a really horrific presidency. But again, I think it's all about your individual process. I think it's your, your approach is much more important than who's going to be in office. Sure, there are going to be groups that are going to benefit from, um, you know, Biden, right? The pots, the uh, some pots, uh, the, the alternative energy names, right? Yeah, I get that part. I get that part as well. Uh, but again, overall, uh, you should be uh, more concerned of your approach your ability to kind of trade uh, responsibly as uh, an adult. I think that's the name of the game. And the most important part is, again, slow and steady wins the race uh, one day at a time, uh, one trade at a time. Remember, our opinions don't mean anything. It's all about price action. So uh, let's talk about Friday's session. Again, you know, pretty uh, aggressive stuff. Uh, for, guys, for all you guys who are joining us, uh, either on the Twitter feed, which you see here, uh, or in the live webinar this weekend, please watch uh, the PS60 Workshop 2.0 and at least 2.0. I'm not saying watch the 2.0 and the 3.0. It's over 10 hours of breaking down the theory. But it's so important before you come into the live webinar, you have to understand why the dynamics, why the moving parts are so important in these pivots. Again, nobody trades these pivots except for us. Nobody. Um, so this is one thing that it's it's a very, very unique system, very um, very specific and you have to be patient. You have to understand the moving parts. And again, I've been saying this uh, for many, many years. I could feed you pivots till, till you're blue in the face, but if you don't understand the moving parts and why things are happening and more important, why things are not happening, you really are cheating your, your, um, uh, your progression as a trader. So please, before you join us, please watch uh, these workshops. So let's talk about uh, Friday session. Uh, Netflix didn't trigger, Tesla didn't trigger. These are my two, these were. Uh, my two uh, top watches for the day, obviously, they didn't trigger. So like, again, like I say, life goes on. Uh, Square absolutely exploded into earnings. Um, 185 rejected a bunch of times pre-market. And people ask me all the time on these pivots, do pre-market and after hours uh, data matters? Absolutely. The more data you have, the better, uh, the merrier. Uh, 185 rejected a bunch of times and needs to build. Here was Square. And this is where I say 185. If you look at this whole area here, uh, 185 got rejected, 185 got rejected, 185, 185 finally just ex exploded, went out of its mind, uh, traded over over 200, big, big move there. Uh, Roku, 240 needs to confirm. Now, again, 240, 240 wasn't like this secret magic, you know, it, uh, sneaky pivot. It, it was a, it was 52 week high. That's all it was. Uh, 240 needs to confirm uh, for it to go. Roku just went out of its mind, right? So here is the 240. Right, took out the 240 and stock traded all the way to the 255 area. Huge move there. Uh, MRNA 7180 72 needs to build. Here was MRNA, right? So here was MRNA. Took out this whole daily channel, uh, traded up to 74 before coming in. So big move there uh, as well. Uh, AMD, nice looking trade. I, I don't even think that the, the trade on AMD is even really even started. Uh, but 85 rejected three times needs to reclaim. So right, so here was AMD. Right here was AMD. It took out this whole 85 area, and now the next area of interest could be this 89 um, area to test. So keep an eye on AMD for definitely for this week as well. Uh, for all you guys who were long uh, PLTR off that 1170, you just saw a monster call buying coming on this thing. Uh, they were coming for the 16 calls. Uh, congr again, congrats for all you guys who are still swinging this thing. Uh, PLTR from the 1170 area went to $15. Just a sick, sick move there as well. Uh, Roku, Tesla, obviously never got to that area as well. And I believe that is it. So uh, again, uh, crazy market, crazy run. 
And now it's over, right? Just like Trump's administration is over, we have to look for the future, whether, again, you're, you're on board with it or not. Again, you have to make the best of it. This last week, whether you caught these trades, where you didn't catch these trades, it's over. It's time to move on. Guys, God bless. Uh, I wish nothing but health and happiness for everybody. Uh, if we can all get along, life would just be so much better if everybody can just crack a smile from time to time. Guys, God bless, and I will see you all next week.